All right, folks, the American Banker Magazine is named John O'Brien, the 2016 Innovator of the Year. Of course, we've been talking about, uh, he's been on the panel throughout the show, CEO of the nonprofit group Operation Hope, which educates poor and middle class Americans on financial issues such as how to avoid foreclosures, building credit, and inspiring folks to start their own small businesses. We've been sitting here talking about uh, these issues, and so, uh, of course, you, you guys have hope inside. When you, when you say we can win at this, how? By the way, that's the first time in 200 years of banking they put a black person in that role. Uh, so, uh, well, first, congratulations, because mm -hmm. uh, the fact that it's 2016, but I think going 2017, we still haven't first uh, is significant <laughs> there. Uh, so, but, so, so across the street from the White House, the building called Treasury Annex. Abraham Lincoln in 1865 signed legislation, Freedmen's Bureau, which created the Freedmen's Bank. The Freedmen's Bank's mission: teach free slaves about money. He thought the most important thing he could do after the Civil War was to bring blacks into the free enterprise system. Two months before that was 40 acres and a mule. It's field action 15. So if you had 40 acres, well you had 400,000 acres, then you had the mule, that was January, February, then you had a bank to finance the crops, and then he was killed in April. <laughs> Frederick Douglass tried to run the bank in Lincoln's absence, but the bank had been pimped and, and, and manipulated. The bank- And, and Douglass put in- $10,000 of his own money, $20 million dollars today. Of $20 million today. No broke man. Come on. So he wasn't just an abolitionist, he was a businessman that owned property in Baltimore and Anacostia. In fact, his property is still there in Anacostia today, we should go tour it. Uh, and he had, the, he had the freedom to be able to say what he wanted, do what he wanted, and go write his own check to a government he knew wouldn't get the money back. Uh, and he, when, he banked, when the bank failed, he said the failure of this bank did more to set free slaves in America back than 10 more years of slavery. That's right. And that was 1874. Pop your fingers. You fast forward 100 years to Dr. King and my mentor, Andrew Young, our mentor, 68, in Memphis with the Poor People's Campaign, trying to redistribute wealth, and he gets killed before his first march on Washington. Here's my theory. It's not like we tried free enterprise and capitalism and ownership and we screwed it up. We never, we never got the memo. <laughs> There's a memo on money and free enterprise, and we never got the memo, and I'm going to help deliver the memo. So we renamed the Freedmen's Bank, the uh, Crazy Annex Building, the Freedmen's Bank Building, January this year, so nobody seems to know about it. And we're opening a thousand Hope and Side locations. Y'all know, because we covered on TV once. Yes, you did. <laughs> we're opening a thousand Hope and Side locations inside of bank branches, inside of grocery stores, big box retailers, hospitals, houses of faith, government offices. Ebenezer was the first one. And people say I'm a dreamer, people say I'm crazy. I have 400 orders in two years. Uh, we're moving credit scores 120 points in 24 months, and nothing changes your life more than God or love than moving your credit score 120 points, because seven of the credit score communities don't riot. Whoa. 500 credit score communities riot. Of, uh, and, so, and so we're gonna move the economics up, we're gonna get the GDP up, we're gonna create homeowners and entrepreneurs, and make this so that banks can say yes to borrowers versus if you're 500 credit score, they're gonna say no to you. I don't care what color you are. You 550 credit score, 580 credit score, 620 credit, you're still gonna get a no. You're 680? You're 700. My mother's 815. They don't even know what race she is. The answer is yes. Whatever my mother wants, yes. So we have popped the, the bank referral approval rate at all these places we're at. We're in Whole Foods because <laughs> their employees need it. We're in Hyatt Hotels because their employees need it. Uh, we're at Ebenezer Church. We're in City Halls. In, we're in Ferguson, Missouri. We're in 40 banks. First in nonprofit every time. So, to black banks, brother? Uh, we're going into black banks. The Freedmen's Bank failed because the speculators spent all the money. Black veterans put their money in those mm, banks. Yeah. It wasn't mm -hmm. because of black financial illiteracy. You oh, know no, that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, I mean, no, it was, I mean, it was manipulated. So, so will this ultimately mean we will have institutions we own and control? Because that's what gives you political power. Yeah, Fred Douglas, as you know, they made him the ambassador to Haiti. Got down there, yeah. and the Haitians said, we're not talking to you. Why the government already told us you're not in charge. So, yeah. in other words, this isn't just about a few individuals getting well. This is about institutions. Is that, so, is that what's So, be clear. I'm a nonprofit, just so you're clear. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. a nonprofit. Sure. So, I, I, we take no, we take no, we take, in fact, all our services are free. Everything I just told you. Subsidized we, we, by white banks that are going to make a lot of money out of this. I want them to make money. Yeah, but I want them to make money. You, I, anybody hear this? I want you to make money. What, what's wrong with? Okay. I want you to make. Every, and now it begins to unravel. See, this is the important uh, thing, man. We're talking about institutions, unravel. not individuals. Capitalism. The, the, the lie they sell us is about. It's about if you have individuals. A job, you're a capitalist. Listen, man. When we look, go back to the Trumps. You see these grifters. These grifters are Please dealing don't, with institutions. Don't put my name in his in the same. Well, sentence. no, but you gotta think that way. If you're not thinking about institution building. So, so, but, but, but here's the question. I'll, I'll pose to y'all. Because, well, first of all, let me say this here. Uh, I've only got about four more seconds. By the way, I got four, three. Me and customers today. I've only got four more minutes. Two billion invested in inner city. <laughs> I've only got four minutes left in this segment. Uh, and so what we'll do is after January, uh, what we'll actually do is we'll actually do this topic for a whole hour. Wow. Okay? Perfect. So we'll do that. But let me throw this out. It's part of the mistake that we keep, we, as African Americans, we are having 
constant political discussions, but we simply don't control our own politics. Isn't it simply a question of if you do not have a strong economic base, yes. everything else is irrelevant? No, that's, that's true. right. That's, that's very true. I don't true. know if everything else is irrelevant, but I no, think that's well, irrelevant. If you ain't got if you ain't got your own money yeah. Yeah, to control yeah. your situation, you swimming upstream. You, yeah. you part, I think that's partially true. I think the other part of it is you're less likely to pay attention to your political power when you're just struggling to keep your lights on. I yes. think that absolutely is the yeah. case. But I also think that we it's high time for us to pay attention to both. We've always traditionally been able to crack open a little bit at least the political process a hell of a lot easier than we have the economic Here's the challenge process. We always talk about black folks, black, black folks, ho, 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 black folks are the only we people in the clue. world we all, who created oh, a, who Leo, created, Leo, wait, wait. Sorry, only John, people in the Leo. world who created a political power base before an economic one. I'm not criticizing that. I'm saying that's, that's a... The only thing we could do. Oh, I didn't know that it was going to cause. No, 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 no. <laughs> Cleo. We always talk about if people dialogue. are poor, they don't try to access political power. Sometimes when people get rich, they try to become white. And when they get a lot of economic power, they try to assimilate and be as white as they can be That's and mimic that question. culture instead of being power, being working on behalf of black how? people. We always talk about how black no, no, people. No, 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 how? Black no, 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 how? Well, a lot of times black people want to be, not all black people, first of all, I don't want to generalize like that, but I'm saying, I'm trying to do a contrast here in terms of the assumption that if you're poor, you're politically disinterested. A lot of people that I've met before who are black and wealthy are politically disinterested too when it comes to black power and transforming uh, black communities into powerful places. They become white and they become part of the so-called elite and they're gone. Come to Atlanta. We always talk about black people leaving black communities come to once Atlanta. they get a certain type of job and never coming back. Well, I don't understand what you mean by they become white. What, what, what they become part of a white culture culture and they don't, don't necessarily involve means. themselves well, in black let's, let's make it very very clear <laughs> what you see Carver National Bank you can draw a straight line from the end of enslavement to today and yeah. every time you see these black institutions Carver financial institutions, institutions system, economic that'd be, institutions that'd be right. no absolutely what, what, what we can't do is ignore what Cleo is saying here this question of assimilation is very real it's a cultural question it's a political question and it is as Roland says an economic question and it's in a self-esteem problem well yeah but but guess what it's not one that we inherited from ourselves I'm not a, we, we, don't disagree. Disagree. we don't disagree we don't disagree right don't, we yeah. don't. No, we don't. We don't. In that regard, we don't. And some of us think like the same white folks who think we don't deserve anything. I mean, it says 62 percent um, supported um, somebody. That, Can we anyway, stop the bottom line is that a lot of us have, Let me ask you. Didn't you, didn't, black you moved edges. into inside white banks after starting as an independent institution, right? A brick and mortar institution, and yeah. then you moved into white banks, right? My question this is a very basic question: How many of the people that you're helping? How many people that you're helping? And I'm very happy about what? you here. You help. Mm -hmm. How many of these folks have their money, including all of us, in black, black banks? banks. I, I don't. I don't question whether it's not it's, either or. Is what you say? Go ahead. Okay. Literally, I got. 30 seconds. Do it next time. I don't question when my people have their money. I ask you, do you want a home? You want to become a homeowner? Do you want to become wow. a small business? Let me help you do that. That's my job. Okay. See, it's very, it's Andrew, very, very financial focus. It's not black power. Okay. Focus. Andrew, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> That's it? Okay. All right. So I've already told y'all we're going to do, we're going to end up having uh, an actual, a whole hour conversation <laughs> on this app. Well, I just said it. I agree. Can I be the amen Good. Good. You were mad. I didn't say two seconds ago, I was saying amen. Look, look, don't, don't let me have to <laughs> cut you. Okay, let me thank our panel, John, thank Cleo, you. Chris, uh, Greg, maybe Angela. We shall overcome. All right. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.